Hello, I'm Cyrus. Welcome, fellow wizards and witches, to this immersive Hogwarts visualization journey. So, ones at the ready, begin by sitting or laying down in a comfortable position. Start by taking a deep breath in through the nose, filling up your body with the breath, holding the breath at the top. And now releasing slowly out through the mouth. Let's do two more breath holds to really settle everything before we begin. Breathing again deeply in. Holding the breath and staying present with the sensations head to toe. Releasing slowly and vigorously out through the mouth. And now the final deepest breath yet, breathing in deep all the way down to your toes. Holding the breath calmly and presently. And now releasing in slow motion out through the mouth, relaxing all your muscles as you release. And now settling into a final position that's comfortable for you. Committing to a sense of consistent stillness so that your mind and consciousness can be truly transported to Hogwarts. And now that you're settled in, seeing and feeling yourself on platform nine and three quarters. Saying goodbye to your loved ones and any mingling with the muggle world you've done recently. And boarding the Hogwarts Express. And as you wave your farewells to those on the platform, and the guttural steam engine of the train begins to chug a choo-choo its way out of the station, you notice the quietly soothing streaks of rain that dance upon the windows as the locomotive emerges into the London countryside. Noticing how all of your nerves about the coming school year and the uncertainty of the adventures that perhaps await you are fading away as every student in every cabin of the entire train is encapsulated by this same soothing rain. And you simply take a moment to simmer in the quiet anticipation of the journey in front of you. And before you know it, you've arrived. The moment is here. You're back home at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You approach the castle with a silent awe. The majesty of its inexplicably satisfying architecture temporarily suspending your thought as it towers above you. Entering the building, you feel a burst of warmth and childlike joy as you run up and down the moving staircases with your closest friends. Greeting ghosts as you go and acquaintances, ancient subjects of paintings and professors alike as you settle back in to this one-of-a-kind school. With a whisper of the secret code, you enter your dormitory. Hurriedly unpacking your belongings so you can hustle down into the comfort of the common room. Feeling the touch of the cool stone wall you graze your hand against as you descend the staircase. Cozily nuzzle into your couch. Hearing the crackling of the fire. Smelling the almost overwhelmingly sweet scents of hot chocolate. And that particular smell of wood burning from the fire wafting gently in your nostrils.
sitting comfortably and taking in the calming movements of your housemates coming and going. Feeling a peculiar desire for mischief beginning to arise, but deciding to take one more moment to ground yourself at the center of this subtle commotion in the common room. Feeling yourself blissfully unbothered at the proverbial eye of the storm, as the rain indeed continues to patter persistently upon the windows. Enough peace for one evening, you think? So you unpack the invisibility cloak and the marauder's map you've inherited, and make your way into the hallways for a spot of casual shenanigans. Solemnly swearing that you're up to no good, you tap the map and make your merry way along the halls, perfectly invisible under the cover of darkness. Playing whatever variety of ingenious pranks you fancy on other students foolish enough to be out after dark. Before retiring for the evening, you choose to take a slight detour to the library, where you sneak into the restricted section and take a few sweetly rebellious moments to read whatever you want, because you can. Mischief managed, indeed. The next morning you've risen early and find yourself seated in your favorite class. The first of the semester and one of many in your rigorous magical curriculum. But today, you're fully present and keenly attentive, perhaps in part to counterbalance the casual delinquency of last night's activities, but nonetheless soaking up the wistful, benign simplicity of the moment. The scribbling of chalk on the board, the raising of hands, the passing of notes. And the structured casting of spells for educational purposes. As the class concludes, it's a bounteously sunny day, so you decide to walk with your friends along the Hogwarts grounds. Waving hello to your fellow wizards and witches, you witness them gleefully reuniting you allow yourself to live vicariously through the collective joy of the student body, sharing stories of their summers and ambitions for the school year ahead. The cool breeze flows through your hair and the wind blows through the leaves of the ancient trees that decorate the grounds. As though in a dream you find yourself come across a sizable hut and a rotund figure with an unmistakably genial energy sashays towards you. It's none other than Rubius Hagrid. After exchanging pleasantries and a cup of Dragon's Well tea, Hagrid leads you to the edge of the Forbidden Forest where you hear an animal approaching with hoof sounds. Your mind races wildly in anticipation. Is it a unicorn? A centaur? Around the bend of the clearing, you see it emerge. It's the majestic Hippogriff. Hagrid gives you the green light, and you approach the proud Hippogriff slowly, maintaining sincere eye contact, and kneel gently before it in ultimate respect of its nobility. A moment passes as the Hippogriff senses your energy field, and then it bows, gently but clearly, 
apparently determining that you are pure of heart. So, swelling with excitement, you cautiously begin to climb the beautiful beast, Hagrid giving you a boost up as you sidle onto the meticulously crafted saddle, your hands grazing the glorious creature's voluminous feathers, and relishing this brief moment of pause as you sense its power and potency underneath you. And with the firm tap of Hagrid's mighty hand to one of its hind legs, you feel everything lurch forward, the hippogriff's hooves striking the ground in a rhythmic acceleration as you hang on for dear life. And with a powerful gusting flap of its wings, you're suddenly airborne. Closing your eyes and hanging on for the first few terrifying moments, but as you open them, you sense yourself safely cradled by the animal's steadiness and its enormous wingspan, and you begin to relax, knowing that you are in good hands, or on good wings as it were. You bravely glance down and see the grounds getting smaller and smaller, as you make your graceful ascent closer to the clouds. Your comfort grows and each passing moment you feel a symbiotic connection to your hippogriff, steering it with a gentle sensitivity as though it were an extension of you. Weaving dare devilishly around the turrets of the castle, lifting higher and higher until you clear the castle and see nothing but the awesome expanse of nature in front of you. The rolling green hills forming a valley as far as the eye can see. The sun piercing through a smattering of clouds and shimmering brilliantly upon the vast lake below you. Drawn in effortlessly by the beauty of the lake, you guide your hippogriff's wings to stop flapping and descend with ease towards the water. And as you begin to glide parallel to its perfectly serene surface, you hear the satisfying sound of its talons slicing through the water, kicking up a cooling and refreshing mist as you decide to take your hands off to lean back to put your arms out as a proclamation of utter and complete freedom, to let go a mighty yell that even the heavens could hear, and allowing yourself to feel that bliss of reckless abandon reverberate through every cell of your body, as nature stretches out in every direction around you. Forever connected to your hippogriff, you take one final joyride around the grounds, soaking up everything from this bird's eye view as you welcome perspective on your worldly problems from this vantage point. Completely carefree, you glide easefully to the ground, only to be told a spot of slightly troubling news. Your student rival, your arch nemesis, has caught wind of your unique kinship with the Hippogriff, and has publicly expressed an unrepentant jealousy, therefore deciding to formally challenge you to a duel in the Great Hall immediately. So incensed and emboldened by your right to the recent ride of the Hippogriff, you gather your friends, housemates and acquaintances of convenience, and strut boldly over to the Great Hall, where your rival is waiting for you, somber and humorless, atop the elevated dueling platform. You march into your place one foot in front of the other, quietly concentrated upon maintaining your composure, 
but it's short-lived as the rage possessing your rival causes them to strike first before you can even complete your courteous bow. So you dodge, weave, parry and counter cast your spell back. A thrilling flurry of lights and sounds as formality flies out the window with this rapturous beginning. As the battle intensifies it becomes apparent that nothing is off limits save for the unforgivable curses. And so you muster every ounce of your might into this final spell, the one you've been practicing for this exact moment. And as you utter the incantation to cast this spell and feel its power flow from your wand, you concentrate and channel the total sum energy of your magical education, the soul of your animagus, the spirit of your Patronus, and the collective energy of your fan club cheering you on from the dueling gallery. And of course, all this positive energy is no match for the weak-willed jealousy in the heart of your rival. And so their wand splinters and casts off so wildly it may as well be a permanent disarmament. But as they buckle to their knees and bemoan what could have been with the hippogriff, Instead of sinking to their level, you simply stride across the platform and offer them a hand, guiding them up with compassionate reconciliation and forming an unmistakable energy of peace between the houses where there once was division. And you quietly wonder to yourself how long it will last, but decide to appreciate this rare moment regardless. And in the spirit of Christmas, you offer your rival turned frenemy an invitation to Hogsmeade, where you announce a round of butterbeer will perhaps rightly be on them. And with the distribution and division of galleons predetermined, you gather your friends new and old, put on your warmest jackets, hats, and hand-woven mittens, and begin the merry walk along the path to Hogsmeade. On the way, your legion of admirers lift you up on their shoulders as celebration of your dueling victory. And you ride that wave of goodwill and admiration all the way into your first Hogsmeade pit stop, Honeydukes. You peruse the aisles in a sugar-crazed fervor, taking in all the options and filling your cart as though in an endless buffet. Selecting a bit of everything, perhaps reaching for one of each of the saltwater taffies, the jelly slugs, acid pops, sugar quills, and of course a large packet of Birdie Bot's every flavor beans. And after walking out having sampled a bit of everything, and shelling out every spare silver sickle on your person, you leave feeling slightly poorer, but a thousand times giddier. High as a sugary kite, you make your way over with your mates to the infamous Three Broomsticks Inn. Vaguely familiar Hogsmeade residents combine with fun-loving Hogwarts students to create a cacophonous crowd of Christmas revelers. You settle into a cozy but appropriately communal table and mull over the options of mulled mead, gilly water, red currant rum, even a beverage that suspiciously resembles a muggle's Shirley Temple, before calling out to Madame Rose Murta and settling on the inevitable, a round of foaming tankards full of butterbeer. You clink in cheers and guzzle back the delicious flask of butterscotchy warmth. That feeling of warmth amplified as your table erupts in laughter at a classic inside joke. <laughs> And you spend a fleeting glance out the window to see the Christmas snow falling gently and poetically, as if in slow motion. And you make a point to stop and appreciate what might truly be a perfect moment. Before you know it, you're energized and under the influence of the confluence of butterbeer and honeyduke's array of confections, 
You've taken to the powdery roads of Hogsmeade for a snowball fight with your friends. Much giggling ensues, but this transcends fun and games to you. You're totally warmed up in your zone of dexterity and speed from your earlier bout in the duel. Hitting every one of your targets and dodging every attack upon you, you will not be denied your crown as Snowball Fight Champion. Even as your group passes the shrieking shack and echo the screams that emit from across the chasm, it's unclear if the fear of your peers is due to the haunted property, or simply because of your supreme excellence at snowball fighting. And as you make your way back, you allow them to hit you a couple times with snowballs, just so everyone feels good about themselves. Back at Hogwarts, you stroll the halls ever so slightly intoxicated by Butterbeer, and find yourself serendipitously walking past a tapestry of Barnabas the Barmy teaching trolls to dance the ballet. So like a dutiful Hogwarts explorer, you walk past the blank section of wall three times, concentrating hard on what you might need even in your current fugue state and the entrance to the Room of Requirement manifests spontaneously in front of you. You wander through its makeshift aisles past winged catapults, fanged frisbees, a variety of fine jewels, cloaks, and even dragon eggs. Surrounded by this abundance of untold riches, you settle in front of the one thing that catches your eye. The coveted mirror of Erised. You sit in front of it in a meditative position, keenly aware that all the material goods you could ever wish for are within arm's reach, and that so many thrilling, exciting experiences have already been yours this semester. You simply choose to reflect, no pun intended, Upon the question the mirror poses to you, what is my deepest desire? What is the truth of what you feel and long to create within this world? Knowing there are no limitations within this magical space that's been conjured and allowing yourself this moment of sacred reflection and feeling. as the mirror reflects something clear back to you, choosing to hold that to feel the fulfillment of that desire within your heart and carry the love and openness of that with you as you rise to your feet, allowing that self-recognition to hearten and empower you as perhaps you recognize the simple truth that at least the essence of whatever you desire already lives within your heart. So with your heart centered and your spirit full of abundance, you pull out your wand and Akio flying carpet just for the heck of it and ride a handcrafted flying carpet out of the room of requirement, sealing the entrance behind you. Before you know it, in a blink, it's the end of the school year, and you gather with your friends into the Great Hall for the final dinner of the year. Cordiality and formality fall to the wayside for this final hurrah, and you feast upon the heartiest meal of the year, and you sing and dance, and wizard's chess is played alongside exploding snap and firecrackers are set off as students from all different houses mingle and soak in every second with the bittersweet knowledge that it will be your last moments together until next year. But you're determined to make the most of it as you chatter and snack and drink until the wee hours of the morning. (laughs) 
reluctantly the next day you go to board the Hogwarts Express back home. But it's okay because you'll have one last ride with your best friends and you'll return home with your heart full. Allowing that fullness to stay with you and fuel you for ages. Knowing that this time away from Hogwarts will make going back even more special because you'll be able to fully digest and reflect and appreciate the journey you just went on at your home away from home. So as the Hogwarts Express pulls away, you take one last glance back towards the castle and wave a small goodbye for now, knowing that you can return anytime you want simply by closing your eyes and seeing and feeling Hogwarts in your mind's eye, knowing you can access those feelings of belonging, love and warmth anytime you choose within your heart. When you feel ready, begin to open your eyes and return to your physical body, moving it in whatever way feels intuitive. Thank you for taking the time to go on this journey to Hogwarts, and if you know someone who might enjoy this experience, please share this with them. Feel free to like, leave a comment, make a donation, ask a question, and I hope you have an amazing, magical day.